Alright, this is the video lesson for Mod 3 Lesson 2, Factoring GCF and Trinomials. In the previous video, we looked at adding and subtracting um, and multiplying polynomials. We're going to start to see um, factoring, which is just another way of doing division. So we're factoring GCF, which is the greatest common factor, and a trinomial is where we have three terms where A is 1. Um, so this is kind of a review of what you saw last year in Math 2. So basically, um, we're going to be factoring. Um, just a reminder to what a polynomial is. So our polynomial is basically consists of very variables, constants, and exponents, um, and we talked last video of how to rewrite it and find our leading coefficient and, and the degree, which is the largest um, exponent for the polynomial. So typically we have it what's in standard form, and standard form is when everything's all multiplied out. It's in our, our nice form where um, in where we have um, it's in descending order, and we're kind of able to easily see the degree, the lead coefficient, and the constant. Um, so for like for example this one, you would have a lead coefficient of one, a degree of four. There are one, two, three, four, five terms. And if the question was, what is the constant? The constant is just that value at the end. The constant would have been one, okay? Um, that's just the basically the term without a variable. Um, we're gonna start to see, well, well, how can we write in factored form? And again, this is a review from math two. Um, so when we, we break down our polynomial into different factors or binomials, um, that's called factoring, right? So that's kind of the process we're going to be, remind ourselves how to do today. So the first factoring strategy we're going to see is called the greatest common factor, and this is the part you're going to see in your notes. When we say GCF, we're looking for the greatest common factor. What's the greatest value or variable that all the terms share in common? Um, in this video, we're also going to factor trinomials. Um, that's this where there's three terms. And then we're also going to see a difference of two squares, um, which again, these are all for ones that we did back in math two. So when we talk about greatest common factor, um, if I look at example one, what we're doing, um, I'm going to write a little line under all these, we're looking for the largest number, first of all, that goes into all of those coefficients. So what's the largest number that goes into 81, 45, 63, and 90? Um, we, we, there's a lot of numbers that go in there, but we want to pick the largest value that would work. And so for this one, it actually works out that the largest value is 9. Because um, if I looked at 90, uh, 90 is 9 times 10, and 9 actually goes into all of them. So even though 3 would work, um, you, it wouldn't be the greatest factor. It would just be like a common factor. So what we're basically doing is dividing all of these by 9. So I'm going to pull the 9 out front. That's where this greatest common factor goes. And it's like you're dividing each of these by 9. So 81 divided by 9 is 9. And you still have that x to the fourth. Um, 45 times 9 is 5. So you still have a 5x to the third. Uh, 63 divided by 9 is 7. So 7x. And then 90 divided by 9 is 10. So when they, we asked to factor it, this is how we would factor it. So we, our greatest common factor was 9. So we divided the 9, and we really just reversed the distribution process, right? So instead of distributing, we d we're dividing it out. Um, for number 2, the same thing. So I'm going to see I have a 10 and a 10. The greatest value they have in common is 10. And then they also have some variables in common. Um, so I see both of them have a u. And I'm going to pull out the smallest degree I see. So I'm going to say it's going to be squared. And the reason is, um, you know, if I have u to the third, I can't pull out. I'm going to do this right here. Um, I can't, you know, take u to the third out of u squared. That, you know, that there's not enough u's in there. Um, so we usually pick the smallest degree that um, can be pulled out of both of them. So I have a u squared and a u3. I'm going to pick u squared, and then we're going to rewrite this. So 10 divided by 10 is a 1. So you can write a 1 if you like. Um, u squared over u squared goes away, so we're left with v to the third plus, and then 10 over 10 is a 1. 
u to the third over u squared is just a u. So if I write this, at my greatest common factor is 10u squared, and we're just writing what's left over. And finally, the last one, um, same exact process. So I'm going to look at first all of the terms. The largest value that goes into 27, 9, 3, and 30 would be 3. And then um, they all have a variable in common of m, and the smallest degree I see is a 1. So I can only pull out an, an m squared from all, or an m from all, m to the first power. So now we have here uh, 3m, and then I'm going to divide 27 over 3 is 9. So m, and it'll be m to the third, because you're subtracting those exponents minus 3m squared plus, and then the 3s cancel out, and I'm just left with an m, plus 10. And this would be my factored answer, because I pulled out my greatest common factor. For example 2, we're going to be looking at factoring trinomials. So this is um, what you had back in math 1. Um, so if you look at it, when I don't see an a value, my a value is 1. That's this, you know, and I'm, we're talking about this ax squared plus bx plus c. So if I do 1 times 12, it's 12. And, and you maybe don't even need to do 1 times 12. Um, we're going to learn this year how to factor when a is greater than 1. Um, so that's just something that we're going to see in the later problems. And if you remember, we're looking for numbers that multiply to give us 12 but we'll add to positive 7, right? So that's a positive 7. Um, so if we list out our factors of 12, and you might see it right away. Um, you might have even learned some strategies of how to use your calculator. So we have 1 and 12, 2 and 3, uh, or 2 and 6, 3 and 4. It has to multiply to a positive, so the signs are the same. And it has to add to a positive, so that means they're both positive. And our answer would be 3 and 4, because 3 times 4 is 12, 3 plus 4 is 7. And so we would write um, x plus 3, x plus 4. And this would be our final answer. Uh, if I write x plus 4, x plus 3, that actually means the same thing, so both answers would be correct. Uh, for question number 2, um, it's the same thing. So I'm going to put a little 1 here, because it's actually a negative 1. And we're going to find numbers that multiply to negative 6, but add to negative 1. So if I list out my um, numbers, we know if it multiplies to a negative, the signs have to be different. And if it adds to a negative, the larger number has to be negative. That's what that, num that's what that means. So if I list out my factors of 6, I have 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. Um, I know that the signs have to be different. And if the bigger number is uh, negative, I know like this column of bigger numbers is probably what's going to be negative. So when I add these up, the only one that adds up to negative 1 is 2 and negative 3. And so I'd write x plus 2, x minus 3. And that would be my final answer. And then finally, for the last one, same thing. Uh, I'm looking for numbers that multiply to 12 or 24, but add to negative 10. And so if they multiply to 24, they're going to be the same sign because it's positive. And in this case, they're both going to be negative because it's a negative 10. So if I list it out, um, 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6, um, I know they're all both all going to be negative because it has to multiply to give me a positive but add to a negative. And I'm actually going to use negative 4 and negative 6. So I'd have x minus 4, x minus 6. And that would be my final answer in factored form. The last type of factor we're going to see in this video is a difference of two squares. And what this method is, is basically we're subtracting two perfect squares. Um, so x squared is a perfect square. 
25 is a perfect square. So these are numbers that if I square them, I, I'm getting that value that's a perfect square, right? So if, or if I see, yeah, so if I square 5, I get 25. So when I write this out, x squared is actually x times x. 25 is actually um, 5 and 5. Or, x, or negative 25, negative 5, and 5. And so when we write this out, I'm just putting the x in the first part, the 5 in the next part, and then two different signs, and that's it. So when it's a difference of two perfect squares, um, you're just finding what number squared gave you that value in the problem, and then you're, it's like you're doing the square root. Same with question number two. So 16 is a perfect square. So I have 4x and 4x, 49 is 7 and 7. One's going to have a plus, one's going to have a minus, and that's my final answer. For the last one, um, you actually have that these are, you know, perfect squares. But a big issue you're going to have is this is an addition sign, right? So if I do x minus 9, x plus 9, when I multiply that back out, I'm going to get x squared minus 81. And that these are not the same, right? So this is actually what we call prime. So you would actually either rewrite the number or you would write that it's prime. So it, there's no value or divisor that goes in there. If you have any questions, you can sign up for T-Bolt time, get help in the center, or ask questions during class.